When taking an evaluation, you have to take a really, really good case history. That is something that is extremely difficult to do when you're in a school setting because you don't want to bring that parent in during an IEP meeting and discuss with that parent uh, the entire birth history because that's not the purpose of that type of meeting. So unless you're actually meeting with the parent, this is a difficult thing to do, but the important thing to find out is the birth history, uh, whether the uh, child um, has had any kind of tonsillitis, adenoid problems over a period of time, middle ear infections, digestive issues, respiratory infections, and what are the pa patterns, and if there are any disfluencies. We know that children go through a normal phase of disfluency, but what we want to look for when we're evaluating a child is whether they're struggling in the neck, whether they're able to resonate their voice, whether, they're able, whether they hold their breath. Anywhere in this system where there's tension, uh, biomechanically you can't voice. So that's the purpose. I mean, Stuttering is still theoretical, and it's thought of as a neurological deficit based in the central nervous system, but there are a lot of neurological voice problems that we deal with as voice problems, and my belief in doing work with stutterers is to really do the same kinds of activities that we would do with voice patients, at least initially. So the first thing we're gonna ask the child to do as we would an adult is to take a full breath. Okay, so all of you out there, take a moment to take a full breath. Don't hold your breath, just breathe. Okay, now since I believe in cueing yourself internally, I would like for you all to close your eyes and take that breath again and think to yourself, where is my breath coming from? Is it coming from my shoulders? Is it coming from my chest? Is it coming from my stomach? Is there a combination? What's going on there? Okay. So kids are going to have a tendency to want to go <sighs> when you ask them to take a breath. So I don't say to them, take a big breath. I just say take a nice full breath just like you normally do. Sit there very comfortably and let me see how you're breathing. Okay. And of course we know the ideal breath is the diaphragmatic breath so that we have enough breath support to come up here and hit the larynx. And then we see how long a person can sustain phonation and also sustain breath. So we ask for several vowels, ah, e, u, and then we ask for s and z so that we can uh, see how they do with some consonants and see how they do with some vowels. You can take an s to z ratio. I don't find a whole lot of benefit in doing that particularly because that's more speech related than it is voice related. So what exactly are you looking for? Like how many seconds are in duration? And that kind of thing. A child ought to be able to phonate for about 15 seconds if normal. Okay. In comparison to, let's say, a performing artist that should be able to do 30 seconds or whatever. But 15 seconds is pretty normal. If you get anything below that, then you know this child is probably not using enough breath to support that voice, and then you get more evidence to see if there's a hypofunctional style of voicing after that.